But one of the things that I told you was that there were going to be shootings in schoolyards, in schools, in shopping malls, in McDonald's, in fast food restaurants all over the country, and these would continue until guns were so demonized that the American people gave them up willingly. Well, all these things came to pass. But we're still not willing to give up our guns, and this has them in a quandary, which means something terrible is about to happen. And I told you that all of these people, whether they were adults or children or whatever, would be current or ex-mental patients on some kind of psychotropic drug or antidepressant drug, such as Prozac, that they would claim to hear voices in their head and that they would either try to attempt suicide or if they were caught in the act of trying to attempt suicide and weren't able to do it, they would try to provoke law enforcement or whoever to kill them. Well, most of them have succeeded in committing suicide. Some of them were captured before they could actually do it. Tonight I'm going to tell you the story of one young man, a child, actually. His name is Kipland Kinkle. Recently, Frontline did a feature story on this episode, but Frontline left out a lot of things. And Frontline did not report it honestly, although I really believe that the reporter giving us the story thought that he was reporting honestly. He doesn't know what I know. He's probably never heard me speak. I can tell you for a fact he does not listen to this broadcast, doesn't even own a shortwave radio, certainly doesn't live in the Round Valley of Arizona. Kip Kinkle was the son of teachers. His mother and father were both teachers, pretty famous teachers, actually. Bill and Faith Kinkle, who lived in a place called Shangri-La, right outside of Eugene, Oregon. Kip attended Thurston High School. He had a sister. He had problems most of his young life stemming directly from his mother and father's desire for him to excel in school. Well, he wasn't so good in school. He had dyslexia. It took him a long time to learn to read, no matter how hard he tried. He was not particularly athletic, but his father was. So was his sister and his mother. I mean, they all excelled except for him, and so he was always being put down by just about everybody. They'll tell you that they never did that, but that's baloney and you all know it. Anybody who ever was reared in a family like that, you know what happens to somebody that doesn't fit in. No matter how much you love them, they just get criticized to death until they feel that they don't belong. And so he began to look for other things to do. And uh, he found other things to do. They got him in trouble. Not big trouble. Most of the things that Kip Kinkle got in trouble for and was just thoroughly demoralized over were things that in my youth nobody would have even thought about. And in fact, me and the many people I knew do, did some of the things that Kiplin Kinkle did, and, uh, you know, it, it was no big deal. See, when I was a boy, when you have conflicts with other students and you get pushed into a corner and the only way out is to have a fist fight with the bully, we didn't get in trouble. In fact, if I went home and told my dad I was in a fist fight with the school bully, the first thing he would ask me is, who won? And if I said the bully won, then I was in trouble with my dad. 
Nowadays, you get in a fist fight at school, that's big trouble, and it goes on your record, and you can get suspended, and uh, all kinds of things that never happened to us when we were young. You see, these people who run the world now, and who run the schools now, and who run society now, and run communities now, think that they're going to eliminate human nature. And they're not going to do it. And these things are going to continue. All they're doing is ruining people's lives. Well, they made a big mistake. Instead of working this out, and just letting Kipling be Kipling, and stop trying to make him excel at things that he obviously was not very good at. Some people are not good at athletics. His father actually forced him to go out for the football team at Thurston High School. This is high school football, ladies and gentlemen. Kiplin Kinkle weighed 120 pounds. I played football in high school. And I can tell you right now, anybody who weighs 120 pounds and gets out on a football field in any high school football game is committing suicide. But yet he had to do it to please his father and please the coach. And he wasn't very good at football. And he got creamed. Continually. This is the kind of things that he was put through. And so, he hated his father. He never admitted it. Even after he killed his father, he claimed that he loved him. And I'm telling you right now, Kiplin Kinkle hated his father. He wasn't going to admit it because that's not something you admit. They sent him to a psychologist, Dr. Jeffrey Hicks, who owned guns, Glocks in particular, and talked about guns and went through hypnotherapy therapy sessions with uh, young Kip. And uh, had his family doctor prescribe Prozac for him to take. So here's Kiplin now going to a psychologist who openly during these sessions has admitted to talking to Kiplin about guns. Talking about Glocks in particular made Kiplin want to own a Glock. In fact, he became obsessed with guns after he began attending sessions with this psychologist, Dr. Jeffrey Hicks. On Prozac now. And uh, he began to make explosives. And when he would get angry at someone, he would go down to the local quarry and set off these explosives. He told Dr. Jeffrey Hicks that he was doing this. And Dr. Hicks never, ever told a single soul, not even his parents, that he was going down to the quarry and setting off explosives, homemade explosives. In fact, Kiplin Kinkle became an expert at making homemade bombs. He pestered his parents and made life at home holy hell until his father bought him a Glock. Two rifles. And Kip on his own collected a whole bunch of other guns and rifles and all kinds of things. He listened to Marilyn Manson music. One tune he played over and over and over again and the only lyrics in the tune are no forgiveness, no salvation. No forgiveness, no salvation. No forgiveness, no salvation. And another one. Shoot. I want to shoot, shoot. I want to shoot, shoot, shoot. Shoot. I want to shoot, shoot. I want to shoot, shoot, shoot. He played these two songs over and over again until it almost literally drove his mother crazy. was under the influence of some very powerful forces, one of which was brainwashing. But one of the things that I told you was that there were going to be shootings in schoolyards, in schools, in shopping malls, in McDonald's, in fast food restaurants all over the country, and these would continue 
and told guns were so demonized that the American people gave them up willingly. Well, all these things came to pass. But we're still not willing to give up our guns, and this has them in a quandary, which means something terrible is about to happen. And I told you that all of these people, whether they were adults or children or whatever, would be current or ex-mental patients on some kind of psychotropic drug or antidepressant drug, such as Prozac, that they would claim to hear voices in their head, and that they would either try to attempt suicide, or if they were caught in the act of trying to attempt suicide and weren't able to do it, they would try to provoke law enforcement or whoever to kill them. 